Have, hey, everybody. Um, my name is Nate Moore. I'm a member of the applications team here at Melco. Um, this morning, we will be looking at ways to blend thread colors. And in school, you were able to blend watercolors and paints and whatnot just by mixing them together. And with thread, it doesn't really work that way. I can't take a, a red thread and a yellow thread and kind of squish them together to make orange. So how do we make that happen in embroidery and, and what does that look like and what are the techniques that we use? Um, all of that stuff that we'll be covering here uh, this morning. I'm going to wait just a little bit longer so a few more people can join. Um, but in the meantime, one of the places that you can look for this information um, is posted in the comments here. Uh, but let's take a look at it real quick. And that is on um, the Melka website. In the blog, there is a section um, and a post on embroidery how-to and to do the color blends. Um, so you can see some of the reference photos that I will be using. And if you forget something I said, um, you can go hopefully read it or uh, re-watch this at a later date when it's posted. So again, my name is Nate Moore. Uh, I'm a member of the Melco Applications team. And we'll be talking about how to blend colors with embroidery. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me bring up my design shop here. Um, that's not what I wanted, but nice to see. Let's go ahead and open up um, this design here. So this is a design that I used in that article. And there are a few techniques that we can use um, with blending threads. And what we need to look at originally is, is how do these threads actually blend? Um, with print designs, and a lot of the ones that we're seeing you know, in newspapers or magazines, um, at least the, the physical print editions, digital is a marginally different story. But the, the print editions, you will see there are photos that are made of very, very, very small dots of typically four colors, magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. Um, so if we zoomed in really, really tightly, you would see all of these dots kind of mixing together. And when we zoom out, we actually see it as a blend of those colors. And with threads, we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to layer different colors of threads together. So we're going to put a red thread next to an orange thread and vary how far apart those lines are and that will change the color as it optically mixes for us. So if you zoom in real close, yes, you're absolutely going to see there's a, an orange thread and a red thread and they're right next to each other. But as you kind of step back and, and look at the embroidery design as a whole, you'll see that blend of color. In this design that we're looking at, we've got three colors kind of blended together. We've got a bottom piece, we've got a top piece, and then we've got a middle piece that goes all the way across the whole thing, and it changes density. So it goes from a light density to a really dense density in the middle, and then back to light again. So if I zoom in here, you can see that I've got the orange going over the red, and it goes from light to dense, and then as it goes back over the yellow, it goes light again. And that, when we zoom out, makes it look like it's just blending from one to the next. In reality, we are just changing um, how those threads behave. There's still only three colors, but it looks like a lot more when you zoom out a little bit. Another thing you want to consider when you're doing this stuff is, what are my thread directions? Um, or, pardon me, stitch directions. So let's take a look at actually creating a blend and, and how to do that. So let's start a new document. And then I'm just going to create a circle here because we can blend with anything. And typically for me, fill stitches are going to blend a little bit better than satin stitches. Um, with stitching, the longer your stitches are, the more they stay up out of the fabric. Um, with shorter stitches, they sink down in a little bit more. 
Um, and you can utilize that to help further the effect of the blend. Um, but that does make it a little bit tougher to blend satin stitches that typically stay up out of the fabric a little bit more. They're nice and shiny, um, and they can be very sculptural, but they're a little bit harder to blend. Um, so I like blending with a fill stitch. Um, so I've got my stitch type set to blend, or pardon me, set to fill. And let's change this to a color that we can see a little bit better. And now, if I right click and I go into properties, I have the ability to change my density. Um, so I could do a very light, say a 20 point density, fill over something else, a, another color. Um, and that would give me kind of an in-between color. But if I want to actually transition through, I need a little bit of help with that. And that's where I'm going to go into the effects portion of properties. In the effects portion of the properties, I have the ability to set up a custom density. And this is where that transition starts to come into play. I can turn this on, hit apply, and you can see just with the default properties that are in there, I start out really dense and I go to really light. So if I was doing that over another color, so let's do that real quick. Let's duplicate this because I'm lazy. I'm going to grab that bottom one. I'm going to turn all of this back off. And I'm going to take my density down to like a five. And if I change that bottom one to an orange, you can see that I'm already blending kind of from an orange to a yellow. And that's all really being done with that top layer. Let me move that over for a second so that you can see here's the base layer, here's the top layer, and what that transition is, is accomplishing. And if you want to have really effective blends, another thing that you can do, because we were talking about how longer stitches stay up out of the fabric a little bit more. If my first layer has longer stitches than my second layer, those stitches are going to come up out of the fabric a little bit more. And then as that second layer comes over with those slightly shorter stitches, they'll pull down in. The other thing that you really need to make sure that you do, um, line up your stitches. Uh, if, if I have stitches that are lined up to each other, they can fall into each other and blend a little bit better, and that's a much more effective blend. If I have stitches that are falling at angles to each other, those angles will create kind of sharper edges, and they'll, they'll, they can even, if they're at 90 degrees, pull gaps in the one underneath. So with blends, make sure that your stitch directions are lining up, and that's going to give you a much more effective blend. All right, so we've got our stitch directions lined up. That was really easy because, honestly, I just duplicated the same uh, element with all of the same properties and then just modified the densities. Um, and we'd probably want to go in and uh, modify those stitch lengths too. So if I bring this down, the original one was 40 points or 4 millimeters. If I bring this down to 30 points or 3 millimeters, hit Apply and OK these stitches are going to sink down into that first fill a little bit more and, and further that blend. Another thing that we may see um, in, in our blends, when we're dealing with light densities, travel stitches become visible. Um, so you'll want to move your entry and exit points to kind of minimize that. Um, if you don't have that option or if you have something with uh, a hole in it, so let's line these guys back up. And let's put a, a hole in this one. Um, okay. Just kind of a weird shaped hole. But now in doing that, I've created the necessity for travel stitches. If you have that necessity and, and you just can't get around travel stitches, one thing you may want to consider is using uh, the Trapunto effect, 
which will move all travel stitches to the edge and kind of get it out of the way of your blend. So that, that can be a very effective tool for this as well. When dealing with uh, those custom densities that we, we've been looking at, um, you've got some options. So let's move this out of the way a little bit more so we can see what those options are. So again, I'm currently only dealing with this top layer. And uh, with custom density on, you have the ability to choose how you want that density to be affected. And we've got kind of a linear progression right now of really dense to really light. If I go to convex, we've got dense to light to dense, and you can see that going through the form. Dense here, light, dense again. Exponential kind of gives you a little more of the dense and then way up to the light. Wave goes back and forth a few times. Um, and then if you, if you need to kind of create your own, go to Custom, and then you can add points along this line and move them and do what you need to do to make this blend what you need it to be. Um, so if you are doing more organic things, um, flower petals or fur effects, this can be great with digitizing animals, things like that. You may not have a perfectly smooth blend. You may need to have it a little chunkier here and a little chunkier there. Um, this custom density is a higher um, product level feature in Design Shop, so it's going to be in those higher levels. Um, for the lower levels, you can um, chunk up your fills, so break them up into pieces and change the densities yourself. It's not quite as smooth, um, but it is something that you still have the ability to do. So let's go back to convex. So right now I've got convex. It's, it's dense and light and dense. Um, if I choose to reverse that, I can go light then dense then light, which is what I did with the orange in this piece. So all I did was reverse it so that it goes light on the orange, really orange, and then back to light again. And if we look at how this would sew out, also the bottom piece and then the top piece, those could be swapped, it doesn't matter to me. And then I'll finish off to make the blend at the end. And then for blends, uh, having super detailed shapes that need blends is a little bit difficult. Um, so for me doing more detailed pieces, or in this case, very defined letters, what I may consider doing is outlining it afterwards, and that can clean up my shapes quite a bit. And I, I think it helps to do the blend and then do the details. Doing blends as details gets a little bit uh, more tricky, um, but you can totally do it. All right, let's see what else we can, what other kinds of trouble we can get into. Um, <clears throat> let's look at another way to do this. So you've seen me um, duplicating pieces and creating blends that way. Um, and a slightly easier way to do it in properties, if you're using that uh, effects piece with the custom density, you can choose to have it automatically blend. Um, and that will reverse um, the piece underneath. So if I, let's change this to something really uh, dramatic so that you can see it. 
So we've got this red piece, it's reversed from the yellow piece that goes over it. Now, um, this red to yellow blend, I, I've got a, a few problems for me with that. Um, one of my problems is going from a red to a yellow is really, really harsh. And to have that blend be effective, you may want to be a little more subtle with your color changes. And you may need uh, to add a few more transitional um, color choices for that. The other issue uh, for me with this is when I use the automatic blend feature, I have less control over the stitch lengths of subsequent um, layers. So with that, um, I tend to do things in pieces and do them myself. Um, but I'm a control freak, so guys can do whatever you want. And honestly, um, when I'm doing these blends and doing all this kind of subtle digitizing, my first sew out is never my last sew out. It will take me two or three edits before I get it right. Um, and if it's super detailed, it's going to take me a few more than that. All right. Um, give me just a moment to uh, look at this other piece that we'll look at. Um, so we've talked about using custom densities to create blends. One uh, another effects piece that we can use in Design Shop is random edge. Um, so if I create just a shape here real quick, and this is using a satin stitch, but we can change it to be a fill real quick. There we go. Um, if I go into properties, and I go back into effects, we have random edge available to us. And when I turn this on, I then have the ability to specify how much I want it to be random. So let's do 30%, and I'm going to leave it at both so that we can see what's going on right now. And what that does is it basically creates a fuzzy edge on the end of it. Um, and that may be great. What do I do with that? Um, again, fur effects are great with that. Um, but let's start with a new piece, and let's grab a fill. And create a piece like this. I probably don't want it to be black. I probably want it to be a green. And then let's do another piece kind of right over that. Come back around. We'll go the other way. So here, no point of reference as far as how big this is. So let's take a look. Let's shrink this down just a bit. There we go. So in looking at this, I'm creating a leaf. And this leaf is OK. Um, I could add an outline. I could add maybe some veins um, to it. But let's see what we can do with a little bit of color blending, and let's see if we can use that random edge to further that effect. So let's go back to this, and I'm going to duplicate. Now, first, let's change some of our stitch directions. And if, if you're struggling with stitch directions, um, what is a good stitch direction, what's not a good stitch direction, how do I make this look a little more sculptural, and I'm using a slightly curved stitch direction on here, um, I don't tend to use super extreme curves in my stitch directions that creates, well, number one, you can't curve a stitch, right? A stitch is just thread between two points. Um, so creating a curved stitch line, um, the more extreme it is, the, the shorter your stitches have to be to, to, to make it effective. Um, but with a more gentle curve, you, you can get a lot of light play off the thread. So if I can move this around on screen a little bit, you can see how that thread, in theory, will catch the light a little bit differently, um, which can further a blend, oddly enough. Um, so we've got this piece here. But if you're having trouble with that, 
One thing um, that sticks in my mind a lot, and it's it's honestly leftovers from when I was in college, but uh, look at some of the old um, masters as far as etchings go. Um, Albrecht Durer was great at this, uh, but if, if you get a chance and you do an image search um, for cross contour drawing, um, it's a technique we learn in life drawing, um, but it, it is great for figuring out how stitches may fall across a form. Um, so if I were to draw my arm, I might have the stitches come across this way, and if it's foreshortened, you might even curve them a little bit. So imagine lines uh, being projected upon a form, or a grid being projected upon a form. How would those lines curve if you were looking at it, and then make your stitches kind of follow those same curves? So um, line drawings of botanicals are also really good to look at for how would I create those stitch directions. So we're going to mimic that here um, on this leaf, and then we're going to use a slightly different color and random edge to further that effect. So let's work on this stitch direction real quick. Tweak this just a bit. That'll work fairly well. And now I'm going to duplicate these two. And I'm going to change them to a really light green so that on screen it shows up um, quite a bit. When selecting my threads, again, I'm going to be a little bit more delicate with my color choices than I am on screen right now. And then let's... Um, Let's lighten these up. Let's go into Properties, and then I'm going to go into Effects. Let's use a Custom Density. Let's do maybe Convex. I think that'll work well for me, but let's start out with maybe a 4, and we'll end in the middle with maybe a 12, so it's a little less extreme. And right now this looks a little weird. Um, but we've still got some work to do. I'm going to shorten that stitch length again. So the top ones I'm shortening. Um, what I may also choose to do is choose to do a random patternless fill for that, and what that will help do is hide that step fill pattern in those lighter um, uh, densities. Sometimes you can start to see a wave build up just from where the, the needle penetrations fall. I'm going to edit this top shape to be kind of just the edge here. Let's do, grab that edge, bring it in. So I'm not, I could have redigitized this as a second piece. Again, I'm lazy, so I am modifying the ones that I have. And I'll bring this in. And then to kind of blend this edge in, We'll go back into Properties. We will go into Effects, and let's enable that random edge. And I'm going to put about a 30% on there. Um, right now it's on both. I don't want this bottom edge to be random. I want that edge to be nice and sharp because that's the edge of the leaf. But I want the other edge to be random. So let's choose one of these. Um, it's left or right. Let's see if I get it right the first time. It did. That never happens. Um, I always guess wrong the first time. And so then let's come back in here and do the same thing with this side. And then again, I'm going to do a random edge, maybe about 30%. And this width is how far kind of off of this wireframe line am I going in either direction? So keep that in mind. Um, and again, I don't want it to do both. I want it to just be one. This time I got it wrong, so I just go back in and choose the other one. Now I've got it right. And then I may even choose to slightly alter my stitch directions just a little. I am changing off of what's underneath. Um, if my stitches are small enough and my change is subtle enough, I can get away with that and still create an effective blend. But now I'm also kind of furthering the effect of that. And again, right here, it's very, very 
weird. I've got a neon green on top of kind of this deep emerald green. Um, in reality, you probably want to choose something a little, again, a little more subtle. So how do I do that? What does that look like? Um, let's take a look here at a little bit of color theory and a little bit of color wheel. Um, behind me on the wall, I have a color wheel that was purchased at an art supply store. Um, you can grab one of those if you think it's going to help you. Um, they're nice to look at, especially if you're not familiar with color theory so much. Um, what's really nice about it is it will give you kind of variations and and which way to go. What I want to say is when you're stepping through a blend and you're choosing those colors, you've got kind of three areas that you want to look at. And the the top one um, in this color wheel of crazy thread cones that we have here is what we would consider hue, and that's kind of the name of the color. Is it red? Is it yellow? Is it orange? My light just went out. Excuse me. And um. What we'll do with that is that's going to kind of change you around the color wheel. So as I move around this color wheel, if I'm blending from red to yellow, what I may consider doing is putting an orange in there in the middle. And that's what you saw me do on that fiery logo. Um, the other thing that you want to consider is what value is it? And value is how light or dark is it um, between white and black. And then you've got, if it was red, Red's kind of right in the middle here, and then I've got a pink. That's a very light red, so that's essentially red mixed with white. And then you've got kind of a very dark red, and that's red mixed with black. The other kind of area that you need to look at with color is how bright or dull it is, and typically I would consider that saturation. So you've got a very bright red, and then you go all the way to a gray. And what's kind of crazy about this is if you were to take a black and white camera or black and white film take a photo of this or take a photo of it and turn it to black and white this bottom row would be very much the same um, because red is very close to this gray but looking at it in full color we we definitely see the differences when you're dealing with a blend and you're selecting all of your thread colors and obviously I have a mild problem with collecting thread colors because colors and they're cool um, you'll want to select thread colors that are a little bit closer in one or two dimensions um, and, and kind of make those steps in one or two, but not all three. Try to keep them a little bit closer. So if I'm moving in from kind of a red to a yellow, maybe I choose an orange because I'm going to change that step in that hue a little bit, but I, I try to keep about the same value and about the same saturation. If I have a really bright red and then a really dull orange and then a really bright yellow, that's not going to further that blend as much as I, it's not going to be as effective as I want it to be. All right. So let's look at, um, we, we've looked at, ways to do this with random edge. We've looked at ways to do it with um, your uh, custom densities and your, and your fills. Um, there are some other kind of fun ways that we can get into trouble with stitch directions and densities and things like that. So let's go back to this kind of crazy design that we had here, where it's just a circle. I'm gonna turn that off so that I can start again with something a little bit more normal. And let's say for a moment that I wanted to digitize a basketball. Because it's something that I'm going to be working on and I know basketball season just ended. Um, sadly not so well for my team. And uh, but we want to start with, so we'll start with just a circle of orange. And yes, I could grab, you know, a, a black lines and kind of digitize my lines of a basketball on it. And you guys are going to forgive me for this not being perfect because it's me just kind of drawing in design shop oddly. Um, of course, you will do much better and have reference photos and it will be perfect. Um, but we could do just kind of a straight up basketball and, and that's okay. That, that works for 
a lot of applications, but if we wanted it to be a little more intense or a little more um, artistic, we have the ability to do that. So if I were to duplicate um, that first, and I'm just doing that with Control D, you could also right click and go to duplicate to do that. And then let's, um, let's give it a little bit of shading, a little bit more dimension. So I'm going to right click, go to color, and I'm going to grab just a slightly darker orange. Uh, this will work for on screen. And again, um, a lot of times what you see on screen is going to be a little more severe than what you want to have when you uh, sew out. Um, you may want to choose something a little bit more subtle. Um, when I'm digitizing, if I'm not demonstrating um, and I'm not showing this to you guys and what I'm doing, you'll oftentimes see me digitizing in bright pink or bright green or bright something so that it sets apart from what I'm digitizing over. Um, the actual colors kind of come later for me. I need to see what I'm doing. But let's take a look at this. Let's lighten up this density of that second piece. And I'm just going to go to, I don't know, a 12. Um, and that's a guess for me because we're going to be changing a lot of things here. But let's go into effects. And I just realized that I'm kind of covering some of this stuff up. Um, but let's go down to distor distortion effects. And this time I'm going to start doing things with those stitch directions a little bit even more extreme than I was doing before. And let's look at double wave. And you've got lots of options here, um, but double wave is going to work well for this basketball. And uh, I will move these points together. What this allows you to do is give it kind of multiple stitch directions and it will distort throughout the form to kind of meet those stitch directions on the end. And you can see we can get all kinds of crazy um, how those stitches are. Uh, but let's move these down kind of close together. And then I'm going to put a curve point in here and I'm going to drag this up. I'm going to do the same thing, drag this down. And now it's kind of got a, a blend going on where I've got darker, lighter in the middle. Um, and that's just done through a distortion effect. And if we lighten this density up, so let's go something crazy so we can see it a little bit better. Um, you can see those stitches coming across the form. Uh, if this was a lot darker, you would definitely see that, but with more subtle color choices, you, you've got uh, a, a good chance of pulling this off um, with a very effective blend. And here, again, yeah, I am kind of breaking my rules of make sure your stitches line up well. Um, I've got kind of curved stitch directions at the top, and it's changing throughout the form, and then on the bottom one, I've just got this straight stitch direction going through. Yeah, I'm breaking my rules, but with subtle enough changes, you can get away with some of those other kind of, say, guidelines as opposed to rules. All right. Um, let's take a look and see um, what some of the questions are that have been going on. And my buddy, I think, has been answering several of those, so that's nice. Thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> don't try to breathe coffee. It's bad for you. All right, let's uh, take a look now at kind of putting several of these things together and, and how might this work in different uh, applications. So we've had this uh, cardinal um, that we looked at with print blending. Um, let's take a look at what we might do with this and how we can bend those rules again with stitches. So in this cardinal, we've got lots of different stitch directions. Um, and how do I make those stitch directions feather well? I'm using random edge. So if I zoom in here, you can see, let's go into properties so you can see what I'm doing. I've got just a slight random edge to kind of blur that end. Same thing up here. And then with these detail pieces that are a little bit darker, that's just a satin stitch, and I know I said, oh, satin stitches stick up above everything else, and a lot of times they do. Sometimes you can use that to great effect if I want a little bit of detail to come forward. So I've got this slightly darker stitching 
on top of this lighter stitching to give the effect of kind of those edges of where those tufts of feathers stick out a little bit more. And so to give this guy a little bit more dimension, that's one way to do it. And then uh, another thing that we can do with similar colors um, where you want a little bit of blend but a little bit to come out, you can use just a walk stitch and go in and out and kind of give those details that way where you're giving your own random edge and you are giving your own density. Um, that gets a little crazy with the amount of effort and time involved. Usually I'm pretty lazy. Usually I'm sticking to kind of the automatic tools. Um, but if I either don't have those automatic tools or I need a little bit more specificity and detail-oriented uh, design work, um, that's when I'm going to go in with those kind of walk tools or if I'm completely crazy, a manual stitch. Um, typically don't go that crazy, but a walk stitch going in and out um, can do wonders with that. So that's this cardinal here. Um, up here, I am trying to blend a satin stitch into another satin stitch. If the colors are close enough and you've got those stitch directions lining up really, really well, you can get away with it. It's just a little bit tricky, and it, for me, never goes well on the first sew out. It's usually the third or fourth, fourth um, that, that I get to. Now, um, thinking about densities, and I'm kind of dropping in densities here and dropping in densities there, and, and what is a good idea and what is not a good idea. Um, think about the densities that work well for you on average. So if I have a fill and I'm going on whatever kind of fabric, typically I end up around a 3.8 or a 4.0 density. Um, with layering those, I, I definitely want to start to back off those densities um, so that when I get two or maybe even three layers of stitches, I don't end up with something that is just incredibly thick and hard to wear and almost bulletproof, right? Like that's not good embroidery, that's not what I want to do. So how do I figure that out? Well, math, sorry. Um, what I would do is take that kind of average of a four point density, and if I'm going to use two fills, um, maybe I do, let's see, uh, two eight point densities and kind of blend them together or essentially get that. So when I double them up, my stitches will essentially only be four points apart. Um, that's kind of where I go with that. Do I always use those exact numbers? No, um, especially with those custom densities and those effects where I'm getting those blends throughout the form. It's my best guess. Um, typically, I sew it out and have to adjust it from there. So hopefully that helps with some of that density stuff. Um, in, in, in looking at, um, like I was sewing these guys yesterday and I'll bring this up. Um, on screen here for a second. Let's go back to this will get us there. Yeah. So um, with these guys, I've got uh, lots of fills um, and and in these kind of yellow to white to purple, obviously that's not a um, very smooth blend, um, but it's definitely not subtle, but it's okay. Uh, with the, the flowers that we have here, a lot of times they have veins and things like that, and the, the real flower kind of lends itself to this, and so I can get away with stuff like that. Um, however, uh, the first time I sewed this out, I had my densities way too tight, and it was hard for the needle to even get through on the third pass, so I had to go back through and lighten it up. I've been doing this forever and a day, totally missed on my densities, had to go back in and edit it. So if you are working with this and you're getting stuff that's way too dense the first time, you're not alone. <laughs> I do it too, all the time. Roll my eyes, go lighten those densities, go sew it out again, and it'll help a lot. Um, this too uh, is an exercise in color choices. So on the far right, this one was my first sew out. Sorry, I'm kind of in the way here. Um, let me move this so that I'm less in the way. There. Um, and then let's go in and open this up so you can actually see. 
and there was the original completely different colors that's okay but you can see how those veins can lend themselves to some of those random edges um, so instead of me digitizing and working very hard at it I let the software do the work for me Again, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to stuff like that and then I will move this down and over and hopefully when I overlay this piece everybody will be visible eh, close um, so this first one I chose very very similar colors they were similar in value similar in chroma similar almost in hue as far as the yellows were concerned um, and it almost got washed out I lost some of that detail in the second one this middle one I made this yellow green a little bit darker I made the detail shadow work here with the um, second layer of that purple it's actually um, a kind of a dark purpley brown it wasn't it was kind of an unexpected color for me but it worked so um, don't be afraid to go a little bit out of the box especially you know sew samples give it a shot um, the one on the left I was all set to do an incredibly bad example for you of what blends would do if I got completely bright and completely crazy um, and it still kind of worked so if you're close you may get away with a lot so um, take a look at that for a second let me get that um, a little bit let me get myself out of the way a little bit and uh, I'm going to go grab a thread for you guys to see and bring this back up So in, in working with threads, and again, we've got a whole wall of craziness. If you don't have that, that's fine. Take a look at a thread chart and try to go kind of close to it for that. Again, using that uh, color wheel, um, if you get one, that's great. If you just look one up online, that's great too. Um, but there, there have been um, some great kind of variegated threads. So um, this thread you can barely kind of see. Um, let me get one that's a little bit more variegated has a few different colors in it um, these have been really fun for me doing blends and doing top coats that are just light so I'll do two colors mixed together and then I'll put that one over the whole thing um, and it kind of furthers the effect it's like wow how is that light playing across that what does that look like um, so keep a look on those variegated threads and kind of don't be afraid to throw them in every now and then as well Okay, um, we have covered random edges, we've covered custom densities, we've covered doing things ourselves with just straight up plain densities and multiple fills, how to create those densities, changing those stitch directions, all of that can help quite a bit. Um, and then again, for figuring out stitch directions that will work well for you, do an image search for cross contour drawing, um, and that will get you a lot of inspiration for your stitch directions even if you're not doing a blend um, that will create a lot of light play for you that I think would be I, I find it very beneficial um, even in viewing so let me get this back so you can see it even with viewing um, this pansy you know changing the stitch directions throughout this gives the light play different so the light will hit it even though it's the same color it starts to look like a slightly different color and um, honestly, that's how a lot of things uh, reflect in real life. So if I can mimic that in my stitches, I think all the better. Um, again, looking at dealing with lots of layers of stitches, kind of pay attention to those densities. Um, try not to get too, too thick, um, but definitely sew it out a time or two on something that is as close as possible um, to your final stitching. Um, I love um, blending and playing with these threads and playing with these stitch directions. So I hope that this has helped you guys in figuring out uh, different ways to achieve these same effects for you. Um, have fun with it, give it a shot, play with it, and uh, We'll see you next time on a, on a live session. Thank you so much.